All right, next type of factor we're going to look at is going to be called the difference of two squares or the difference of two perfect squares. Now, I need to remind y'all of what perfect squares are. Perfect squares, of course, are like 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, which is 9, five, um, 4 times 4, which is 16, 5 times 5, which is 25, 6 times 6, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, and so forth, okay? All right, those are your perfect squares. Those are the numbers you've got to have in your brain when it comes to difference of two squares. Difference, difference means it's got to have a subtraction sign, okay? Of two, that means you're going to have two terms with a minus in the middle. And both of these spots have got to be filled with something that's a perfect square. One of these things I have right here are either a letter, a variable that's squared. So why don't we start out with something really super simple like x squared minus, let's go x squared minus 9. Okay, so x squared minus 9. First of all, see I didn't tell, I think I forgot to tell you in the last video that really every time you're supposed to ask for is there something in common. But if I look at this, You'll see that that's understood 1, and that's a 9, so there's nothing other than a 1 in common, and there's not a letter in both of them, so there's nothing in common, which I knew that, but I'm making up the problems. So, but really, you should ask yourself that first. You look at this, and you need to start recognizing, oh, there's two terms, there's a minus in the middle. That means it could be the difference of two squares. This is squared, and 9's a perfect square. This is super easy. All you do is set up two sets of parentheses every time. Put a plus and a minus. It doesn't matter which order it goes in. And you basically square root each term. How do you get x squared? You do x times x. How do you take, And I mean, what is the square root of 9? It's 3. Positive 3 and 3. And that is your answer. Same Basically, the same parentheses, one has a plus and one has a minus. If you had something like this, suppose I had 4x squared minus 1. I look at it. I see there's nothing in common, no letters, no numbers in common. It does have a minus sign. That is all perfect cubes. And yes, one, I'm not cubes, sorry. That is a 4x squared. Those of those are perfect squares. And 1 is a perfect square. Um, so I'm going to set up two parentheses. I'm going to break down 4x squared into 2x and 2x. Remember I said one has a plus, one has a minus. It doesn't matter the order you put those plus and minuses. You take the square root of 1. The square root of 1 is simply 1. And that is your answer. Super easy. So you got to, but the problem, this, this type is super easy. The problem is, is that you got to know how to recognize it. So let's do a, uh, another one. You could have something that kind of trips. This is almost like the one, remember a second ago I did this. Almost the same thing. Okay, remember a while ago, a few minutes ago, I did x minus 3, x plus 3. Okay, now this doesn't mean you're going to decide for yourself to swap this around. You're going to take it just the way it is. Um, and you're going to look and say, oh, 9 is a perfect square. And x is squared. And there's a minus in the middle. So, you're going to leave it in the same order. The square root of 9 is 3. The 3's are still going to go out front because that's where the 9 is out front. You're going to break down the x squared into x and x. It's in the back side. It's in the second um, term. So, you're going to leave it on the back. You're going to have a plus. You're going to have a minus. And that's actually going to be your answer for that one. Notice I didn't swap it around. Similar to that one, but not exactly the same. All right, let's try another one. 36x squared minus 25y squared. Okay, I look at this. It looks like there could be something in common, but if you look at this, 36 and 25, there is nothing in common. You can think about it for a minute, but I know because I made up the problem. And the good thing is this is squared and that's squared. 36 is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square, and you have a minus in the middle. So I'm going to set up two parentheses. Let's break down 36x squared. What's the square root of 36? It is 6. And then you got 6x, 6x. That gives me the 36x squared. You break down 25y squared. That's going to give you 5y and 5y. I told you what about the signs. You have 1 has a plus, 
One has a minus. Doesn't matter which order. No, I didn't told you that five times. All right. But remember, you got to say something seven for y'all to remember it. All right. So that's your answer for that one. Let's try. Let's try a couple more. And then I might be done with this one. All right, let's try one like um, 225x squared minus 49. So you're thinking, whoa, 225, that's pretty big. All right, and so, but if you um, if you take 225 on your calculator, most of you have a phone with a calculator, and you kind of keep going up 10 times 10, 11 times 11, 12 times 12, 13 times 13, 14 times 14, 15 times 15, 16, and so forth. All right, but you're going to come find out 225 is a perfect square. It's 15 times 15. Most of you know 49 is 7 times 7. If you don't know it, use your calculator. All right, so you're going to do, that's the difference because you got a minus sign. That's important to have that minus sign. So I'm going to break down the first term. Square root of 225, what was it? Yes, it was 15. 15x and 15x. We're going to break down 49. 49 is going to be 7 and 7. What you going to put in the middle? Oh, you're going to put 1 plus and 1 minus. Does it matter the order? No. I think that's probably the sixth time I've said it. So I'm going to say it one more time for the seventh time. It doesn't matter if you put a plus here and the minus here or vice versa. you got to have 15x first. And you got to have 7 last. Then 1 plus and 1 minus. Now I'm going to ask one more thing. Like this. Alright. When I look at this, it looks like a prime candidate for um, both of these are perfect squares. And so most of y'all would probably say, oh yeah, 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 yeah. This is going to be it. It's going to be a plus and a minus. And guess what? That is absolutely wrong. Okay. So now I'm going to ask. What's the difference in this problem and this one, other than the numbers? Or maybe I should ask, what's the difference in this problem and this problem? The difference, the problem is this one. Remember, I told y'all this at the beginning. It's very important. It has to have a minus sign in the middle because that's why it's called the difference of two perfect squares. Difference means you got to have a minus sign. If you have a plus. That means you just leave it just like that. That is the answer for this one. Not this one. Not this one, sorry. You didn't see me pointing at it. Okay, so let me make sure. Let me do something and change one little thing and make sure I do it one more time just to make sure you're good. So if you have x squared plus 9... You have to leave it just like that. Why are you leaving it just like that? Because there's a plus in the middle. There's a plus in the middle, so therefore you cannot break it down. It has to be a minus sign. This is just like this. Actually, you call it prime. That means it can't be factored, not with real numbers. Um, but if you had x squared minus 9, of course, we said from the get-go, I think we did that as a first problem, it was x minus 3, x plus 3. And that would be your answer. That's the difference of two squares. Remember, you can go back, rewind, slow me down, whatever. Also, make sure you email me, sharnage at sly k12.org all right if you have questions i'd be glad to um be more specific you can um ask me some more questions now i'm gonna go to the next video but this is the difference of two perfect squares thanks